ten dollars doesn't buy too much these days, but what if I told you that it could save your life? That's right, just ten dollars, the price of a remarkable blood test that can uncover a killer inflammation hiding in your body even if you are young and apparently healthy. Dr. Timothy Johnson, with some sound investment advice, the best money you may ever spend. Are you one of 40 million baby boomers walking around with normal cholesterol levels, thinking you're safe from a heart attack? Well, you may be in for a big shock. That's because half of all heart attacks this year will happen to people just like you. Tragic heart attacks that can strike without warning and end your life in an instant. Half the people who have heart disease find out that they have a heart problem by dropping dead. That's the first symptom they have. But now there's a simple blood test that may save your life because it can find hidden inflammation that may lead to heart attacks. And the test can raise the red flag early in heart disease while you still have time to prevent serious damage. I wish I would have known that in my 30s that maybe I wouldn't have had the damage that I have now. Regina Allen was in her mid-30s when she began to feel constantly tired and sometimes had chest pain. But heart disease was quickly ruled out by EKG and cholesterol tests that were normal. Despite the clean bill of health, her family still felt something was not right. And I said, I've been to the doctor, I've had heart tests done, they just keep telling me there's nothing wrong, so I don't think there's anything wrong. Lucky for Regina, her next stop was cardiologist Dr. Richard Fleming, author of Stop Inflammation Now. I want to take a listen to your heart and lungs. He routinely tests blood for signs of inflammation in coronary arteries. When Regina tested positive, he also did a high-tech nuclear stress test to get a better picture of her heart. What he saw was alarming. We clearly had information that there was inflammation going on and that we needed to treat it. The blood test is known as the CRP test. It's simple and it's cheap. CRP stands for C-reactive protein, which is a protein made in our body in response to any kind of inflammation. There's a super sensitive CRP test that can detect inflammation in our coronary arteries. Overall, having a CRP of three or more puts you at higher risk for heart disease. A level of one to three puts you at moderate risk. Under one, your risk is low. So how did CRP become a major player in the fight against America's number one killer, heart disease? The answer can be found here, in the lab of Dr. Paul Ridker, a cardiologist at Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital. He was searching for something in our blood that could predict the risk for a heart attack, even when cholesterol was normal. He remembers his first big study on CRP in 1996, when he realized his research team had hit a home run. And it was an extraordinary revelation because we understood that we had a better way of predicting heart disease risk. Well, the participants in our studies send us blood samples at base. Dr. Ridker says that inflammation is the trigger that sets off most heart attacks. Inside each of these will be several hundred small little blood samples. That's why having a high CRP, even when your cholesterol is low, can be deadly. We've been telling patients with low cholesterol for years they're not at risk. That's just not the case. To make matters worse, not enough doctors are ordering CRP tests, says world-renowned cardiologist Dr. Eric Topol of the Cleveland Clinic. The patients are going in saying, Doctor, shouldn't I get a CRP? I've read about this blood test. It's really disheartening. The, the medical community is like a bunch of really old ladies. They're so difficult for them to transform and accept new knowledge. Part of the resistance to new tests for inflammation comes from our long-time focus on fats that block the center of arteries and can be detected by angiograms or heart scans. But today we know that only 15% of heart attacks are caused by these central blockages. Cardiologists now believe that most of the time, the cause of a heart attack is a collection of fatty material that grows hidden in the wall of the artery rather than in the center opening of the artery. They call these areas vulnerable or unstable plaques because they have a lot of inflammation along with the fat that makes them more likely to rupture. And when they rupture, like a boil that suddenly bursts, they trigger the sudden formation of a large blood clot that quickly blocks the flow of blood and leads to a heart attack. Thank you, Tinya. Dr. Peter Libby, chief of cardiovascular medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, helped pioneer the concept that inflammation hidden in artery walls is the major culprit in killer heart attacks. 
Here we have the layers of the artery wall. He recently showed me actual human arteries containing a vulnerable plaque that had been growing silently for years. That's all really hidden in the wall. It wouldn't be detected by things that look at blood flow. And the stress test could well be normal in this person. Might very well be normal. So we got this huge time bomb here just ticking away in the wall of the artery. Exactly. But Dr. Fleming, for one, needs no convincing that inflammation is fueling killer heart attacks. He also believes that a diet high in calories and saturated fats makes it easy for arteries to become inflamed. The best way to put out that fire, he says, is with a healthy lifestyle. Physicians like myself only have so many tricks we can pull out of the hat to treat the symptoms. Until we treat the underlying cause, we're not going to correct these problems. Use a spoon to get that out of there. Regina's cholesterol is already normal, so cholesterol-lowering drugs are not the answer for her. Instead, she is sent home with a low-fat diet designed to help her lose weight and eliminate foods that trigger an inflammatory reaction. Phase one is tough. She's restricted to fruits and vegetables to quickly lower inflammation. Oh, this is good. Once that's under control, she can add protein, grains, dairy, and healthy fats. Actually, I felt better. I felt like I had more energy than I did at first. The first sign this diet might be working for Regina was that her chest pain stopped. But the real proof lies in what's going on inside her arteries. Three weeks later, Dr. Fleming does another CRP test and heart scan. And then I want to sit down and go over the test results with you. Amazingly, Regina is turning the tide on her heart disease. The inflammation has really gone down. In fact, her CRP level has dropped in half. It's not completely normal yet, but there's been a big drop in the inflammation by the numbers and even some improvement in the blood flow to the heart. So you're on your way. Well, I have been feeling better, so that's great. But for many people, diet and other lifestyle changes will not be enough. Fortunately, the so-called statin drugs like Lipitor have recently been shown to both dramatically lower cholesterol and reduce inflammation. Kind of look at the curves. So the bottom line, inflammation is a major player in heart disease, and CRP testing is currently the best way to find it, which may help make most heart attacks a thing of the past. Most heart attacks a thing of the past, Tim? Really? Well, with all the other tests we've developed and now with this new test to find out about inflammation and the treatments we have, I really think we're at the beginning of an era where we're going to basically end heart attacks as a problem in this country. Heart disease will still exist. But other forms of heart disease, obviously, but heart attacks are the single most important form of heart disease and if we can make a major dent in that, we'll save a lot of lives. Tim, should everyone take this test, and at what age? I mean, John and I are feeling pretty good, right? Should we all take this test? Not everyone. If you've already been diagnosed with serious coronary artery disease and are being treated with the statin drugs, you don't need this test, because that's ah. how we treat you. But I would say, basically, for everyone else, where there's question marks about whether you should be treated or not, whether you have any other risk factors, I'd be on the safe side. This is cheap and safe, and I'm inclined to recommend it for a lot of people. I had it done for myself. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Exactly. But Dr. Fleming, for one, needs no convincing that inflammation is fueling killer heart attacks. He also believes that a diet high in calories and saturated fats makes it easy for arteries to become inflamed. The best way to put out that fire, he says, is with a healthy lifestyle. Physicians like myself only have so many tricks we can pull out of the hat to treat the symptoms. Until we treat the underlying cause, we're not going to correct these problems. Healthy fats. Actually, I felt better. I felt like I had more energy than I did at first. The first sign this diet might be working for Regina was that her chest pain stopped. But the real proof lies in what's going on inside her arteries. Three weeks later, Dr. Fleming does another CRP test and heart scan. And then I want to sit down and go over the test results with you. Amazingly, Regina is turning the tide on her heart disease. The inflammation has really gone down. In fact, her CRP level has dropped in half. It's not completely normal yet, but there's been a big drop in the inflammation by the numbers and even some improvement in the blood flow to the heart. So you're on your way. Well, I have been feeling better, so that's great. The best way to find it which may help make most heart attacks a thing of the past. Most heart attacks a thing of the past, Tim? Really? Well, with all the other tests we've developed, and now with this new test to find out about inflammation and the treatments we have, 
I really think we're at the beginning of an era where we're going to basically end heart attacks as a problem in this country. Heart disease will still exist. But Other forms of heart disease, obviously, but heart attacks are the single most important form of heart disease, and if we can make a major dent in that, we'll save a lot of lives. Tim, should everyone take this test, and at what age? I mean, John and I are feeling pretty good, right? Should we all take this test? Not everyone. If you've already been diagnosed with serious coronary artery disease and are being treated with the statin drugs, you don't need this test, because that's ah. how we treat you. But I would say, basically, for everyone else, where there's question marks about whether you should be treated or not, whether you have any other risk factors, I'd be on the safe side. This is cheap and safe, and I'm inclined to recommend it for a lot of people. I had it done for myself. Thank you, Dr. Tim.